ഹമദുഹുസ്ലാമുഹമുസ്ലാമുഹമുസ്ലാമുഹമുസ്ലാമുഹമുസ്ലാമുഹമുസ്ലാമുഹമുസ്ലാമുഹമുസ്ലാമ
He made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'unani ilayya wa illa tasrif anni kaydahunna asbu ilayhinna wa akum minal jahilin. Yusuf alayhi salam was very intelligent. He realized that during his age of youth, he may be in his youthful folly inclined to that which is haram. So he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, prison is more liking to me than that which they invite. And if you do not turn me away from the evil snare, the evil plan, I might be in my youthful folly inclined to the fahish and be of the ignorant. So this is just one point that we can take further and further. We mentioned many other points. The importance of education, education and educating the Muslim family about the importance of marriage in Islam. Responsibilities of the parent to get their children man married. We understand that our children are a trust and a manner from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We discussed briefly what to look for in a spouse. Four, four things that you usually look for. Wealth, lineage, beauty and religion. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, you can look for all four of these. But don't forget the main one, which is religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa prayed for the Sahabi that may you be successful with a woman of faith. And then I gave examples of what happens in our community, in our society, that sometimes we look for worldly gain over deen. And I mentioned the verse of Surah Hujurat, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he speaks to the Muslims, and he said, I have made you into tribes and nations, and I have made you into different uh, backgrounds and different colors. Why? So you may recognize one another, not despise one another and say, I'm not getting married to that person because they are from a different race or background or a different country. And then we talked a little bit about how to interact with a potential spouse, that the introduction should be in place of a wali, a guardian, preferably in the home. Ask questions about compatibility. This is also another very important issue. Many of our youngsters, they're just put in front of each other and they're expected to look at each other and think of questions. Speak to the people who are married and the, the important questions that you need to ask for marriage. Talk, ask if you want to ask about your, your potential spouse, if they have any health problems, ask them, do you have any health problems? Do you pray five times a day? Do you want to say, stay separately after marriage? These are very important questions. And don't dwell into the past. Many youngsters, they come and ask the question, do I need to tell about my sins, my previous sins? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a veil over your sins. So why are you exposing them to other people? If a person asks you, you know, how was your relationship before marriage? Did you have any relationships? And you, they ask you with honesty and transparency. They want to ask that question. You can answer the question. Even in the case of families, usually when they see a proposal, they go and ask certain cousins that are connected to the family. And they ask them for questions. Do you know this girl? Do you know their character? Do you know the family background? How are they as a family? What's their religious inclination? Even at that time, if you're in that position of trust, you need to give a true account of how the family is. Because two people are coming together and this could destroy people's lifestyles if you don't give the honest opinion. And it's not also a confession service. Sometimes people, they think, I've got to go and I've got to confess something to my husband to be or my wife to be. No, don't dwell on the past. Dwell, you can't change the past. You can change the, the, the future to come. You can become a better person. And then also we do istikhara. This is very, very important. Many people, when it comes to the concept of istikhara in Islam, they have many issues. And the reason they have many issues is because they don't have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know. I can't get a feeling. Am I supposed to have a dream? Am I not supposed to speak to anybody before I go to bed? In Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made the concept of istikhara very, very easy. It's a three-step process. You pray two rakat to, to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, nafil prayer. And you pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you make a dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala after the prayer. That, oh Allah, I am seeking a new business. I am seeking a marriage partner. If there is khair in this for me, you know and I don't know. You have the power, I don't. If you know there is khair in this, for me, my life in this world, in the hereafter, turn it towards me. And if there is not khair in this, then turn me away from it and turn it away from me. A very simple dua. And then we ask people of experience, those who have successful marriages, those whose marriages are flourishing, ask them about what do you think about so-and-so. When we want to buy a new car, when we want to buy some new gadget, 
We go and check all the reviews. What's the limitations of the product? What's the benefits of the product? Similarly also, ask the people who know. And then when you make your decision, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when you've made your decision, leave it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask questions about their religious inclination. Observe their character. Understand how they are as a person. What kind of character they have. Do the istikhara. And then after this, make your decision. Once you've made your decision, put your trust in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once the proposal is done, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned, do not delay in three things. And we finished on this point last week. The offering of the obligatory prayer, the offering of the funeral of the person when it's ready, and finally the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the marriage of a woman when her match is found. A very beautiful nasiha, advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Why is it that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when the match is done, do not delay in performing the nikah. And we see many families, they go against this advice of the Prophet ﷺ. The engagement is done <coughs> one year before the marriage. Why? Because they have to now work for a year to, kind, to collect money for the lavish marriage they want, the lavish lifestyle they want. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, don't delay in this. And there's many, many things that come into this. One of these is Nazar, that when the, 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 the match is made, and it's spread around the community. Some people, they put nazar on this. That, oh, you know, I wanted that girl for my son. I wanted that boy for my daughter. So this is things, there's, there's benefit in what the Prophet wasallam said. Interaction between the couple also. Now the couple have become a match. And what happens usually in our society? We have mobile phones. They start to talk endlessly. They start to text endlessly. And this is a very, very huge problem if it's not controlled. Because you don't know the person you're talking to. I have many youngsters that come and say, Brother, you know what? The sister, she sent a message and then she went offline for a few minutes. And she's not responding. She was online. She saw my message and she didn't respond. People have so, so much problems with this. You've got a feature on your phone on WhatsApp nowadays, whether you can see whether the person read the message or not. She read the message, she didn't respond. How do you know what her situation is on the other side of the phone? She may be at work. She may have just pressed the button. It may have come up on her screen by accident. And she may have pressed the button and read your message. And you're killing yourself, going crazy. She didn't respond, she didn't do this. And then sometimes what happens is you come home after a day and you want to have a, a chat with your potential spouse. They don't know what your lifestyle is like. You've not lived with them before. And then you start talking to them about your habits and your routines in the day. And these become problematic for them. Why does your mom and dad open your post? In my family, my mom and dad doesn't open my post. Why do you have to tell your parents when you go out the house? In my family, I don't... These are just some of the problems that you have. And these small things, they eat into the couple and they become problems. What's the law of shaitan? He wants... The moment the rishta is done, he wants them to either commit haram or he wants to break it. <coughs> so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to act upon what has been said. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ana wa iyaakum bil wa dhikr al-Hakim. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'in al-Muslimin fa astaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulih al-kareem amma abad So we mentioned the, the process of the nikah which comes next and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned the hasten towards the nikah so usually we see extravagance in our community and this is because we want big loving weddings we want lavish lifestyles we want two, three, four events before the wedding in the Asian custom we have something called the chiksa and then we have the mehdi, mendi all of these customs, each custom, you need to have a new venue, a new location, a new outfit. Different people are going to be invited to different locations. This is extravagance. Even if you have money, even if you have money, think about how you're spending your money. Just a couple of definitions of extravagance in Islam. One of the definitions of extravagance is spending more than your means. And spending on things you don't need. Even if you are rich, you're going to be accountable for your wealth. How you spend your wealth. How you spent on your children. So we come to the nikah. The nikah is a very, very simple act of worship in Islam. We need the bride, the groom. We have the two witnesses and we have the wadi, who is either the father or a mahram of the woman, a guardian <coughs> who gives the woman away in marriage to, to, the, to the groom. And we have the mahar. The mahar is the obligatory 
dowry which is given to the woman at the time of marriage or sometimes you stipulate a time after the marriage that you give the bahar to the girl. And the very very important thing is this is for the girl for keeps. In certain families they give the mahr to the woman and after certain times the, the mother-in-law gets involved or the family gets involved and they take the mahr back. And we even go to extravagances in giving mahr to the, the girl. In my friend's marriage, I phoned him one day, the marriage is on. I phoned him the next day, the marriage is off. Why? Because the family can't come to an agreement over the mahr. 7,000, 8,000, no, we think it's worth 15,000. Unfortunately, in our society, like my, one of my teachers said, if it's going to be like this, then there's plenty more fish in the sea. If the boy can't physically afford it, what are you going to do? You want to get married to the girl, but the stipulations are too high. You have to find somebody else. And then on the flip side, the mahar is given, but if we give you the mahar, you have to give us something else. And it happened in communities, I've seen it in front of my eyes, that the mahar is stipulated 10, 15,000 pounds, but the girl has to give a sofa, the girl has to give a TV, the girl has to give a wardrobe, the girl has to give a dishwasher, washing machine. All of these assets from the girl's side. And in one family, these were given for the first son, they were used in the house, and for the second son, when he got married, they built a shed in the back of the house to keep all of these assets for a later date. This is the sad reality that we have. If the family wants to give it out of love, out of muhabba for their girl, their daughter, that you know, my, our daughter is going into a new marriage and the father wants to spend a little bit out of the love that he has for the children, no problem. But where it's wrong is when you stipulate, when you make it a condition of the contract. This is very important. So even at the time of marriage, when we do the nikah, the verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, mentioned the verses of the Quran. Consciousness about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consciousness about righteousness. One of the verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, O you who believe, fear your creator and utter that only which is upright, which is truthful, which is honest, which is polite. Allah will conduct, will make your conduct and affair whole and sound and he will overlook your faults. Whoever obeys Allah and the messenger has indeed attained a great success. <coughs> So here, even at the time of marriage, why is it so important to mention the words of the lips, the utterance of the tongue? Because 99% of marital problems are associated with how we use our tongues on a daily basis. On a daily basis, we say things which hurt our spouse, our family members. We say things we regret on a daily basis. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us at the time of marriage that be careful Think about what you're, what you're getting into, a marriage contract. Understand what you're getting into, how you need to behave, how you need to interact with the family members at large. So, I think we're going to have to do, inshallah, another final uh, khutbah on this, and inshallah that will cover um, the responsibilities of the husband and the wife. I have not been able to finish um, what I wanted to say today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those of us who are married, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in our marriages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our marriages to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Those of us who aren't married, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray to him that he, guide, he gives us good um, spouses. And those who are married, who have children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to bring up those children in the right manner in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Those of us who are married, who don't have children, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us with a price, price progeny. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة من هذا النار اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك به نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعادك من نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاء ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تذكرون. الله